Hi everyone. Um, first of all, um, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me to speak today. I really appreciate um, a chance to share with you about an open source community in Asia that we have been building um, over a decade now. But um, before that, a little bit about myself. Um, I am originally from Vietnam. I grew up in a place called Kanto. Maybe many of you have not heard about it, but uh, it is the biggest city in the Mekong Delta in South of Vietnam. Let me see if I can um, open up the map to show you. One moment. Sharing. Yeah, so if you can see my dreams so at the bottom here, you can see uh, the little red dogs, it can tell, yeah. So um, a very large portion of this area actually covered by the water from the Mekong River. This region is considered as um, a biological treasure trove of the country, the home of a thousand um, of animal uh, and plant species. Uh, the Mekong Delta is also known as the rice baskets of Vietnam, contributing more than half of the nation's rice production. So uh, life for me was simple and easy. My parents were not rich at that time, but uh, we always had enough to eat. Yeah, so you can imagine the, the weather is super pleasant and nice. When you drop something on the rail, it will roll and become food. Um, so it's quite um, easy um, for the people who live there. So we were also very lucky. As I grew up, I became more aware of uh, the problems happening around us. Uh, one of the things that I noticed I can share with you uh, this photo. So if you um, just curious and look, uh, by chance look for the Mekong Delta, so some of the images similar like this will come up. The Mekong River is getting more and more polluted every day. And um, in the recent report, scientists predicted many provinces in this region will be completely flooded by the year 2030 due to climate change. Um, as we know, many of the world's problems are caused by irresponsible actions of us humans, right? I personally believe that people, when people are more educated, uh, we could be more responsible to our environment. But unfortunately, um, as um, a developing nation, we sadly do not have a good education system until today. Many people in the country still have limited access to, um, to education and a small number of colleagues or university are reserved for people from more privileged backgrounds in our government. Uh, as many other countries, uh, they are very corrupted uh, in many levels. And of course, they are not capable of solving society problems. And the people like us, um, people from the realm, from the community, we lack of means and expertise to build solution uh, from bottom up ourselves. Um, at that time, when I was still in high school, as a young student, uh, I did not see a clear path for what I would want to achieve in my life uh, before my home like, com com completely goes on underwater. So until um, one day, and, and when I get into um, university, I moved to, uh, from Kanto to Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam. And uh, in the year 2007, I uh, attended a free and open source event organized by the EU. I was a translator at that time for one local company. At that conference, uh, I met my partner, Mario Belling, a long-term force contributor who um, really inspired me with his energy and passion for open source and the way he talked about eco um, opportunity for, for all and for the society. 
So I was uh, very interested in the whole idea of open source and the freedom it gives to us. In the following year, I got a chance to um, complete my study in Singapore. During uh, this year, I got connected with the um, local Linux user group. I started to involve regular um, with many user group in, um, in Singapore. Also started to contribute like uh, in many small projects for localization and uh, got connected through the open source people, got connected to uh, many other communities around the world. And I also uh, learned from uh, people that I met from, from this group how to do coding, uh, coding how to uh, work with open source and contribute to um, different projects. Within three years, um, I become more and more active, and I I consider myself at that time as an open source activist. As I went out, talked to people, I was I was so proud that I used Ubuntu and uh, introduced like different software that I have on my machine. Uh, because uh, of, of that, I also share some articles um, um, on the blog and I got invited to, um, to participate in an other open source event in Europe. That was also the first time I got um, uh, to get into another um, uh, part of the world through open source. And I see this as a, a, potential, so a potential opportunity that can help me to, um, uh, to direct uh, my, my life future in a different way. And I also see a lot of potential that can help us to solve the problem that we have right now through um, open source and um, collaboration. So um, in 2009, together with, uh, with Mario, we founded um, the Force Asia organization. What do we want to achieve um, with Force Asia? So, so basically it is a network of people from everywhere, even though we call ourselves Force Asia, we're not limited to people inside Asia. The whole idea is to connect people from the West and, and everywhere to learn from each other, to exchange ideas um, and work together on solutions that can have to fix our problems and also the world problems. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, so people in, in our country facing climate change and and many other issues, we believe that um, open, open tech solution can, uh, could be uh, a way for us to, uh, to address the challenges. Um, and also um, for me, um, open source, when you talk about technology, there are also different opinion about how um, the impact of technology is in, in, in the modern day. But for me, open source is not only about the software, it is the model of collaboration, how people work, how people connected from everywhere and how um, one can devote uh, their resources and effort to one project and this project being shared with a wider community so that everyone can benefit from it. Um, we are very lucky that we, um, of course, able to to sustain the Force Asia organization until today. After many years, we continue to develop our projects and enroll every year. I can um, share a little bit about some of our activities. So at the Force Asia uh, organization, we focus on uh, three main areas. First of all, um, software and hardware development. So unlike many um, other op open source organizations out there, we, 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 we develop our own projects. Um, some of the projects um, can be found uh, here. here. Um, this is just a few of them. Um, so CAI, the open source um, voice, fam voice framework, Locklock is a, a social media search engine. Uh, Fimi uh, is the platform where you can share your uh, media on multiple platforms. Um, BSLab.io is the, a pocket sign lab uh, project, which I can go a little bit uh, in detail later. We have Event Yay event management system. 
uh, such as in a search engine that uh, builds based on the peer-to-peer search engine uh, originated from uh, Yassi, uh, .net. Um We have our own uh, Strum Hamper, which help uh, developers to keep track of their daily contribution. And uh, we have also an open source game and many more that being developed from the interest of our community. Um, so people uh, like the normal open source uh, working model, people contribute to to project online, but they also want to to have a platform where they can meet and exchange in person. So we organize um, events and meetups throughout the year. Uh, one of our um, biggest uh, events is the Force Asia Summit that happened every year um, in Singapore, and it will um, take place again. Um, next year uh, in March in Singapore. So you can see here a list of events that we organize. Uh, we do um, uh, Open Tech Summit in Sri Lanka, in Myanmar, um, India, uh, where we have uh, our most contributors, um, in Japan, in Ho Chi Minh City, and, and, and many more. Um, Next to the events and um, uh, meetups, we run our own uh, coding and education program. One of the program that um, that we've been running for the past four years is uh, Code Hit. So um, Code Hit, so basically. Um, uh, is the content that that guide young developer how to contribute to various Force Asia projects. It's a little similar, a little bit similar to um, Hacktoberfest, where people can go directly into um, uh, the projects of Force Asia on. Um, on GitHub and find out tickets, quit label, got hit, and they can go through the ticket and solve issue. The good thing about this uh, contest is the young um, contributor can have a direct uh, contact with a more senior developer based on real life issue of the project. So they work directly with, um, on project. They get feedback from a mentor on issue um, and make pull requests. So the people get um, uh, the highest number of pull requests every uh, two months uh, will get um, a prize uh, from us and also um, a certificate for their participation. Most of um, the communication on our channel and the community happen on on GitHub. Um, as uh, this is um, a development platform, is uh, can reference directly to GitHub issues. So it's really useful when you want to uh, discuss technical um, uh, topics or or, um, uh, or, um, or, uh, or development. So one of our um, practice in the Force Asia organization is we encourage um, contributors and also newcomers to join uh, the project chat of their interest. So we have event um, uh, chat, we have SUSI AI chat, so it depends on their interest. They can go directly to the uh, project chat and we encourage everyone to publicly um, talk to, to the roof when they want to discuss um, or find out information instead of paying people individu uh, individually. So to uh, our SDE to try to keep everything, uh, all the com uh, conversation, communication more transparent and uh, easier for everyone to follow up. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, the code heat uh, is started or uh, this year already started about a month ago, and we get a lot of uh, interest from uh, from the community. I think we have uh, over 600 OD participants uh, for this um, uh, season, and the number continue to grow um, every day. Yeah. Um, so some of the uh, projects that we do, so I want to just take opportunity to this opportunity to dive a little bit uh, deeper into uh, some of the projects because uh, I believe that um, like in this uh, critical time, uh, not only for Asia but many organizations try to do their best to um, to contribute 
to the um, <coughs> excuse me <coughs> excuse me I, I've been sick in the last week <laughs> So, um, <coughs> sorry about that. So, um, so um, I just want to quickly highlight some of um, the project, that, uh, the, the projects that we've been working on. So um, first of all, um, in terms of uh, event organization, because the Voice Asia has been organized events um, for many years, uh, we've been always struggling to find one solution, one open source solution that can help us to manage the entire event from call for, for, for speaker to, from to ticketing and to scheduling. So before uh, we used to have one system for call for schedule, one system for um, for ticketing and another solution for, for scheduling um, as an, an event organizer ourselves. We have uh, learned a lot from the past few years and um, developed uh, our own solution. Um, let me see if I can uh, share this. So as you can see here, if you can see my screen. So I just show you one example that we um, um, of an event that run on event Yay system. So with event Yay, um, you have the call for speaker in, embedded in, in the system uh, where you can customize um, uh, how you uh, what uh, data that you want to collect from the speakers or from uh, the submission. And then there is um, a, a feature where you can allow invite different reviewer to come and collaborate on the selection of, of the topics. And then um, it also um, allowed you to automatically send out notification um, to the submitters. And uh, after uh, lay the call for, for speakers is finished, you, you also have a chance to um, uh, to make the schedule, like to use the system to um, uh, to raise uh, a program for your own event, and uh, because of the um, pandemic, a lot of the events happen online. So we have um, integrated many uh, like online um, features into event. Yeah, if for instance you can see uh, um, uh, the um, the schedule based on your local timeline, or you can add a uh, video um, a video uh, platform into the event. So we also uh, give the, 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 the organizer the option to interact with um, open source video solution like GC or Big Blue Button. And here, um, so instead of hosting something on your own, uh, to, to lower the barrier, especially for smaller community who do not have the resources to host their own uh, system or event. So we um, offer like hosting services for them as well. Um, they can have uh, their event uh, run on event yay. And they're also a way that help uh, the organizer to um, 
uh, to feature like uh, like speakers and uh, include code, uh, code of conduct and so on. So the whole idea of this uh, system is to enable community organizer from from everywhere, not only uh, big uh, uh, big events with a huge funding, but also small and medium event where they cannot uh, afford to have the um, to to, have, to to pay for a professional a professional agency. They can manage um, uh, the event themselves. So and and everything already included in the system. Um, uh, this is um, uh, just to go into the detail how it looked like uh, the interface of the organizer. Um, so I'm also very proud because since the, the past few months, uh, our team been working really hard on this. That's um, to enable uh, people to do like online event. So I can uh, quickly show you th this. Um, so for instance, this is the event that I organized on behalf of uh, the Open Source Initiative um, last month. And here you can see the option where you can include um, the online um, um, link for your event. And there's also attendees form where you can collect the data, whatever over you, um, uh, you need for, for the conference. Yeah, and uh, for the scheduling, so I as mentioned earlier that there is uh, the scheduling um, uh, feature in place where you can just drag and drop uh, the submission and schedule based on different room uh, and um, and tracks. Yeah, uh, we also have a ticketing uh, system that allow you to um, offer tickets to your attendees. Yeah. Uh, the main page uh, is um, on eventj.com and the code can be filed on GitHub. As I mentioned earlier, there is a, a channel um, uh, on GitHub in case you have any uh, issue or uh, problem with the event, you can go there and communicate directly with the developers. Uh, in the past uh, few, um, few months, we also worked really hard on the documentation uh, for event EA. Uh, there is a user uh, documentation on support.eventyay.com where you can uh, go into and find article how to, um, to, to create event and, and many more. Yeah, so again, the project is available on uh, on GitHub. We are looking for um, uh, supporter and uh, user who want to try it out and contribute to our documentation. So back to the project list of Force Asia. Uh, so basically, event yes is the solution that have uh, organized uh, in the COVID time. Another uh, project that I want to introduce is uh, Pocket Science Lab. So Pocket Science Lab is um, an example how to turn a community project into a consumer product. Why is it so important that um, you have um, a business model behind uh, an open source project. As you know, uh, if you run an open source project, resources is always a big um, question for us all. So the sustainability of open source uh, project require the time of developer, require the resources uh, that the, the project can raise. And uh, therefore, so we want to, to show that there is a possibility to turn community project into a consumer product and can help to raise funding uh, to put back to the um, development and pocket science lab is uh, an example of it. So basically, um, pocket science lab is a um, USB power um, uh, attention that you can connect to your um, Android phone um, or the PC. And it's, and it's come with um, uh, um, a handful of functionalities, including oscilloscope, multi-meter logic analyzer, wave generator, and a lot more that is possible to extend. The entire hardware is uh, open source, and uh, you can also find the um, material, everything available online. 
I just want to share a little bit why we uh, we started to work on hardware project. Um, as you know, that hardware is always require more effort and it also require more um, uh, like funding and the, the way how do you um, produce it also a really tricky uh, question, right? Uh, it started actually uh, back in, I believe, 2014. Um, when we uh, run the Force Asia Summit in Cambodia. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, one of our speakers um, was a physics teacher from a small town in India. He came to us, he gave a talk about Python and how he, he taught Python in school. He came to us with, uh, with a problem saying that uh, it's quite challenging to teach electronics to students these days because in India, um, the students do not have access to to the devices and only only learning from uh, from book uh, is really uh, difficult for them to um, to think and to imagine what is actually happen in in the reality and also it's difficult to motivate uh, to motivate the student to learn electronics and he asked us is there any open source solution out there that can be used for education that can help the teacher to uh, to teach a student uh, easier, yeah. And he also recommended some uh, some project that, that he found um, in the community and based on uh, the the suggestion, the Force Asia community um, uh, like look into this and develop the project further. So we make a, a commitment to, to him and also to the teachers, uh, the, the school network that we connected with, that we would develop uh, something uh, completely uh, open source and that enable people to learn and also to, to, to make it as an example, encourage more people to, to build and, um, and, and release their hardware open source as well. So Pocket Science Lab uh, uh, like, uh, is now being distributed in many uh, platform. Um, on our own website, of course, but you, you can also find it on um, other electronic shop in Asia and even um, in the US. Yeah. So if you want to get a hold with the device and want to play with us, you can also um, uh, find the link um, on the website where to get it. Um, the last year we partnered up with the Open Next um, project in um, in Europe. So basically, um, again, uh, it's got to to link with uh, the current situation, as you know. Um, the corona, corona pandemic has slowed down many um, uh, business and also distribution around the world, especially when it comes to um, uh, production facilities in, in China. So before uh, our product was being uh, produced with partner in China, but again, um, the situation is so unstable. The whole idea with uh, the open neck, the project that we involved is to try to find a way how to produce hardware locally. So we work together with um, Mecca, uh, Mecca Lab and um, um, Mecca Space and Fab Lab um, around um, the area where you are living in and and try to understand their producing capability of course they cannot um, produce like the big quality as um, manufacturer in china but we try to experiment whether multiple and small um, production site can help and also produce like the prototypes and the product locally. Um, so this is being like pilot at the moment and we, we hope that to release the outcome um, in the next year. Another um, project that I want to um, to introduce is Suzy.ai. Um, Suzy.ai is the voice um, a voice framework. Yeah. So uh, of course there um, on many um, industrial solution out there like uh, Google Home, Alexa, um, uh, from from Amazon and many like commercial product, but um, uh, the Suzy AI is the idea that to show um, uh, the community that there is a possibility to develop um, 
avoid the framework um, with open source technology and solution so that uh, the web, the future of the web will not depend on only corporate and big company, but we can also contribute into this. So, um, so uh, from Susie AI, the latest development of Susie AI that, that was we was able to integrate deep speech, um, the uh, speech to stake uh, framework of Mozilla into our project, and we have a very simple uh, installer for you to try uh, for you to try out. So the project website on suzy.ai. Um, and the code, uh, I would highly recommend to, to check out um, the SUSE uh, installer. Um, that was um, the project uh, uh, developed by Michael Christian, uh, one of our senior developers many years um, ago. Uh, right now, we, um, we partner up, so the use case of SUSE AI. Uh, we recently partnered up with the UNESCO in um, in in Bangkok, that develop an initiative for tech and culture. Um, so uh, right now, many um, uh, um, culture uh, um, institution, uh, museum, uh, art center are being closed due to the COVID, and is um, like make it very challenging for um, culture. Um, practitioner and community to connect and to and to get themselves uh, and to uh, to get um, uh, themselves um, being uh, um, educated and uh, and uh, work into this culture field and the whole idea of this tech and cow initiative is how we can enable um, people to continue their practice, continue to share and spread the knowledge about culture and arts uh, um, uh, sector. So we should see AI, one of the use case that we've been discussing with um, other uh, like science center and museum in Asia that can help them to set up a virtual assistant, assistant where um, the existing database and knowledge from, from those center can be um, a knowledge base for um, for this voice uh, assistant, and it's become um, a guided uh, a virtual personnel for people who want uh, to visit, and we also want to enhance the virtual experience for for the attendees. Um, in a few weeks, um, the tech and culture initiative will be launched, um, and uh, we will share more with you in the upcoming days. Uh, so this is um, some of the projects of Force Asia. I want also um, to share a little bit of the um, the lesson that we learned um, from the past few years, how we can uh, become a sustainable organization and be able to scale up. Um, first of all, right, um, top on the list, so we want to attract uh, contributor and developer. So we develop something called the um, development best practices um, that is a starting point for, for developer. Uh, we also a very um, friendly and open community where, where everyone is welcome. Not only Asian, as mentioned in the beginning, many of our mentors and uh, contributors are coming from uh, Europe and other parts of the world. We continuously uh, attract uh, new talents through coding programs and events. So the situation has changed a lot um, like over the years uh, before when open source started a few people get together and then they join up with uh, the people from the community where they share the same interests. But as you know, um, uh, in Asia, it's, it's another story as people like struggling every day, um, taking care of their family, and also they need to find a way to sustain their own life. So um, the um, uh, the hope of having continuous uh, uh, contribution from people um, 
it's it's not like uh, really big anymore. It's not like like this anymore. So in order to 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 continue attract new people, we organize coding programs. Uh, through the coding programs, we get contribution, but at the same time, we provide uh, a training platform that can help people to learn a new skill and therefore um, uh, support their like future uh, career development. A lot of people graduated from the Force Asia program and have a very good job elsewhere. Of course, we want them to continue to stay on board with us, but we also cannot let like, stop people to find a way uh, to sustain their own life. Yeah, um, continuously working with uh, with new people, um, train more uh, young developers. We also work together with um, universities and and school around Asia. Uh, I think it's really important that. Um, like uh, different uh, user groups and different actors in the ecosystem get connected. There are always a notation that, oh, you also have the like, open source community, people also do something and there are always a co competition mindset, but we um, don't want to, to follow this path. We want to work with, with, with people. So we connected with a lot of um, open source user groups and organization around Asia um, to share the resources and foster uh, the uh, open collaboration operation. Another thing that we find very useful to engage people was to um, give them more responsibility. So after um, uh, you spend an, uh, um, an amount of time with the organization, right, uh, you also being promoted to become a, a mentor or senior developers and, and you also get a chance to, to, train, uh, to train and provide guidance to younger um, developer or newcomer. And I realized that uh, people are really motivated by sharing their knowledge and being um, uh, uh, respected uh, and listening to by other people. So that was a very good um, approach. Um, we also uh, support like people to, to send out um, appreciation uh, swag before uh, when the, the situation was normal, we also uh, fly people into our conference. But of course, it's not the case anymore. Hiring opportunities, of course, um, we hiring, we continuously hiring developers to, to work on some of our projects. And we um, always uh, give these priorities to our long term contributors. Uh, rowing different income stream to pay for that. Um, I understand that um, in the US, there's many um, like um, nonprofits and organization being supported by big company, but the situation is a little bit is very different in Asia. We don't get the same level of support uh, like people from the West. Also, setting up a nonprofit is super difficult. Um, therefore, we constantly need to think of an income stream, a model, how we can pay for our development. And um, so I wouldn't say that we are so successful, but, but, but I think that we are doing pretty well with the, um, the, resource, the little resources that we have, we be able to, to sustain and, um, and get funding to continue to grow our projects. Um, Running a lean organization and infrastructure in the beginning, we spent a lot of time on setting up the infrastructure, but later on, we, we move all our coding projects into a GitHub. Of course, uh, you need to see um, uh, like uh, where to uh, where where you can attract the most developers. So that was our decision to not sell hot infrastructure anymore, but um, but run on a third party service. It also released some of the burden from our maintainers and focus more on, on building features. Uh, pandering with enterprises and, and projects. So um, uh, we work, we open to work together with, with companies um, and projects who want to, who share the same passion with us to, to grow open source ecosystem and also to build sustainable solution. Yeah. And um, 
Uh, to find out more about what we are doing, you can vis uh, please visit um, forceasia.org. Um, we also have um, like different ways where you can support um, the organization. So we have the um, membership, so which is only uh, like really simple if you want to, to contribute. So the funding of um, coming from the community, we entirely put into the development of Force Asia project. You can check it, uh, this out. Another way that you can support is to go into uh, the code or go into uh, the project uh, code. You can find everything on GitHub. Uh, so you can also uh, see, uh, of course, it depends on your interest, uh, what programming languages that you like to work on. We have from Python, Java, um, uh, and many uh, um, other so, so so I think that uh, we and even for uh, the beginner you can uh, contribute in the documentation as I shared earlier there is the um, uh, event uh, yes uh, support page that you can contribute to go to codeheat.org. Uh, our um, uh, our contest where you can find out more about the project. Um, the Force Asia Summit uh, uh, call for a proposal will be announced in, uh, announced in the upcoming week. I hope to receive uh, submissions from you and to support us to run the event. You can also get a ticket uh, to one of our events. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so I think, um, uh, for, for now, I just want to, um, to emphasize again that, um, we, uh, contribute our part into um, drawing and sustain the open source ecosystem. And I believe that we need more successful examples for the implementation of uh, sustainable solution. I think that is more important than ever in this critical time that we stay connected, share ideas, exchange our knowledge and work together to address um, the world's most uh, pressing problems. Um, so please um, connect with us. Um, you can find us on um, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, and uh, our uh, webpage for social.org is the starting point uh, to check out um, more of the for Asia projects. Okay, so I think uh, that is all for me. Thank you very much for your attention.